Hazretlerinin ve la husus bu caminin bayanisi ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş iman mezlum kaymalarının ve kahve ehli ivanın ervahı için Allah rızası için el Fatiha Yavuzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim İnnallâhu ve melâiketehu yüsallun alen nebi ya eyvellezine aminu sallu aleyhi ve sellimu teslima Allahümme salli ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala ali seyyidina Muhammed Allahu Ekber, Allahu Ekber Allahu Ekber, Allahu Ekber Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Hayy aleyhissalam Hayy aleyhissalam Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin, ve salatu ve selamu ala rasulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. Nehmedullahi ta'ala ve neğzafir ve şeru an la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike la, ve şeru anna seyyidina Muhammeden abduhu ve habibuhu ve resuluhu, sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve azvacihi ve ashabi tabihi ve ala rahşinin mahadin min ba'di. Ve zemmeti ala tahkik, khusun min alameti hulefe resul ala tahkik, Umar al-Mu'minin, Hazreti Ebu Bakr, Umar Osman ve Ali ve ala baka sahbihi tabi'in, Ridvanullahi ta'ala aleyhim ecma'in Ya eyyuha al-Mu'minul hazirun Rekullahi ta'ala ve tu inna Allah hamal lezine tek ve lezine hum muhsinun Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin ve salatu ve selamu ala eşrafil anbiya ve mursalin Sayyidina Mevlana Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in All praises are due to Allah Lord of the universes The most beneficent, the most merciful all praises are due to Allah who says in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, O you who believe, seek help in steadfastness and prayer. Indeed, Allah is with the patient. And say not of those who are slain in the way of Allah, they are dead. No, they are alive, though you perceive it not. Be sure we will test you with something of fear and hunger some loss in goods or lives or the fruits of your toil but give glad tidings to the steadfast those who say when a calamity strikes them to Allah we belong and to him is our return they are those on whom descend blessings from Allah and mercy and they are the ones that are rightly guided Sadaqallah Lazim Ya Allah bless our master Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the opener of what had been closed and sealer for what came before. The victor through truth on behalf of truth and guide to your straight path and upon his family or companions as truly deserved by his rank and tremendous capacity. May peace and blessings be upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Omar Farooq, Hazrat Osman Al Ghani and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza and all those who follow them until the last day. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Sha'ban wa balikna Ramadan. O believers, we are thanking our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are in the days of His holy month, Rajab Shahrullah. Rajab is a sacred month. Even in the times of ignorance, in the times of complete darkness, in the times of Jahiliya, the sacred months were respected by everyone, believers and unbelievers, idol worshippers and those who believe in Allah. There was no fighting in the sacred months. There was no war in the sacred months. There was no cruelty in the sacred months. Hazrat Ali Karamallah Wajha said, 
Zulm during the sacred months is worse and graver than Zulm during other months. Verily, Zulm is always wrong, but Allah makes things more serious than others as He wills. We are living in the second Jahiliya, in the second age of ignorance, which is worse than the first. We are living in a time where cruelty and oppression is happening every single day. Muslims should never forget that we are living in the Ahir of Ahir Zaman. The Holy Prophet said about this time, the hour will come when violence, bloodshed and anarchy become common. And he told us in another Hadith Sharif, time will shorten, knowledge will lessen, and fitna will appear. Selfish miserliness will enter people's hearts and Al-Hajj will become common. The people ask, Ya Rasulullah, what is Al-Hajj? He والسلام, said, slaughter, slaughter. On this 8th of Rajab, in the year of 1440, in the Urs, of Sultan al -Awliya. on a Juma day we are witnesses to the slaughter of innocent Muslims, innocent human beings who are answering the call of Allah and coming to the masjid for Juma prayers. They were not the only ones. Elsewhere in this world, millions of Muslims are being oppressed too. And our Muslim leaders are helpless and hopeless. And when they cry out, they cry out only to Allah. These innocent ones, men, women and children, they are being tortured and they are being killed. And in this particular day, the whole world has woken up to the oppression that is happening. In New Zealand, while they were worshipping their Lord, this is a zoom of the Ahir Zaman. And the one who killed them, the white terrorist who killed them, the white Christian terrorist that killed them, he is leaving behind a book saying why he did what he did. He is giving the reason for everything he did, saying even this is why I'm killing little children. And with his shaitanic understanding and his egoistic reasoning, he is saying I am a white man. My people are the white people. We have to clean our nations from the dirty and impure Muslims. He is saying that because Muslims are having more children than whites in white countries that the Muslims are committing. And he is saying that the Muslims are committing genocide against the white race. This thinking, complete ignorance that even shaitan is laughing at him, is pure jahil thinking. The thinking that one race is superior to another. 2,000 years of Christianity has not taught them anything. The thinking that one land belongs to only one people. The thinking that I have to make my own race, my own blood to be superior so that I can kill whoever I need to in order to do so based on the color of my skin. This is the evil ignorant shaitanic teaching that the Holy Prophet he came to this world to end. The Holy Prophet said about this kind of evil, leave it. He's saying about this kind of racism, this kind of nationalism, leave it. It is rotten. And now this rotten, ignorant evil has left scores of innocent believers martyred on the floor of the masjid. This type of nationalism, this type of racism, this type of racial supremacy has been a curse on the face of the earth. But this curse was carried out most successfully by those who claim to be following the teachings of Jesus of Isa salam. That they claim that they are following the Prince of Peace 
That murderer is saying that he was afraid of a white genocide. Yes, white genocides, real. The real white genocides are those that were perpetrated on the people of the world by the Europeans. Real genocide is when the European settlers murdered and brutalized and eliminated the Native American populations of America. Real genocide is when the King of Belgium killed more than 15 million people in the Congo. Real genocide is when more than 15 million were killed in India by the British through starvation and cruelty. Real genocide is when millions of Chechens perished when they were expelled from their own homeland by the Russians. And the list goes on. In Africa, in Asia, in the rest of the world. Genocide is what have been done to the people of the world who suffered the injustice and oppression of the Europeans, who sought to Darwinize the world and kill the weakest. The evil that happened in New Zealand, it is a descendant of the same Jahil evil that has been present throughout the history of mankind. Islam came to end this evil. The Prophet came to teach all of mankind that the color of a person's skin means nothing about their value as a human being. Islam came to teach that there is no difference between an Arab and an Ajam, except for their taqwa. Islam came for Hazrat Bilal al-Habashi to stand on top of the Kaaba and proclaim the call to Allah. Islam came for Hazrat Salman al-Farisi to be called one of the Ahlul Bayt. Islam came to break the bonds of slavery and racism and cruelty. And we have 1,400 years of history to prove this. From Damascus to Andalusia to Baghdad to Istanbul, our history is rich with this kind of Islam. Islam came to the very people of the world, to every person of the world, to be united as servants of Allah. Islam came to teach us that before we were sent to this world in different colors, we were spirits. Islam came to teach us that our land and our homeland is not this world, it is paradise. Islam came with the teachings of the Quran. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, O mankind, indeed, we have created you male and female. O mankind, we have, indeed, we have created you male and female and have made you nations and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is the knowing, the aware. Islam honors all of humanity and it is the teaching of Islam that the inheritors of shaitan, they hate and they oppose. As Sultan al-Awliya Shaykh Maulana Muhammad Nazim Adil al-Khani Qadazlasir is saying, Islam is saying all people must be respected by being from human nature, not to be respected by their colors. No more should there be respect for white people because they are white and no respect for colored people because they are not white people. Islam is saying no. Islam is saying Allah Almighty is never looking to the color of people or the outward appearance. You are carrying that this is beautiful, that is ugly, that is white, that is black. But Allah Almighty is looking to all his servants through their hearts, not through their forms or their colors or their shapes. You must understand Islam's highness because the Prophet is saying a colored person may be a sultan, a white person may be a servant. It is normal. It is all right. Important for the deeds of mankind in the Divine Presence are their intentions, not their outward shapes. To say that is white, that is colored, that is English, that is German, that is Arab, that is Turk. In the Divine Presence, your deeds your deeds are important. If they are good and bad, if they are good or bad, not your color, not your nationality, even not your beliefs, but your intentions through your beliefs and your intentions through your deeds. Allah Almighty is looking to your intentions and to your deeds and punishing or rewarding. Beware of the divine justice. 
O oh, people, don't cheat yourself or others with nonsense teachings, with nonsense sayings, with nonsense theories. Beware of the divine revenge. This thinking, this thinking, this human thinking, this enlightened thinking, it reached its full bloom during the time of the glorious Ottomans. During the reign of the honored house of Osman, no empire in the history of mankind was so inclusive of every race, of every color, of every ethnicity, of every religion. From Turks to Kurds to Arabs to Armenians to Hungarians to Bulgarians to Bosnians to so many nations, the Ottomans ruled them, gave rights to them, gave equality to them, and gave the best life to them because we had a Khalifa, because the Ottoman Khalifas, they had sheikhs, because the Ottoman Khalifas were running to please the Prophet ﷺ, to please Allah. They were not running to please their families or their nations. That equality was given. As our Shaykh Sahib al Saif, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kabrisi al Rabbani, Qadaza Siri is saying, the Muslims, instead of running to catch up the wrong lifestyle that is presented to mankind through the West, Western ideas under the name of democracy, hypocrisies, and all these nonsense must turn back, must run back to the Prophet ﷺ, to take what Prophet ﷺ brought to us from that time because nothing is stale. Everything is fresh and alive. Whatever he brought to us 1400 years ago just fits to our lifestyle today too. If anyone is saying, Islam is backwards and is bringing us backward, then we must look how Islam rose and when Islam was ruling, how it ruled east, west, north and south and check the history. You don't have to go too far. Just one page over, one century almost. Turn that page and look at the Ottomans, that one nation, one ruling system sitting in Istanbul and controlling the whole east west, north and south. They didn't have technologies. They didn't have all of today's equipments that instantly you speak here and they see it in China, all these fast communications. They didn't have that. But they were able and capable to rule 72 different nations, different tribes, different people, different religions under one banner and they were not eating each other. They were all happy with their life. Such a civilization was done by Islam that even a hundred years ago, you could have taken off from Morocco, going all the way down to Indonesia, and you didn't need anything else but just one passport, one ID with which you could go everywhere. That was civilization. Wherever the Ottomans went, they brought this high civilization. When Sultan Mehmed Fatih Han entered Istanbul, he brought this high civilization with him. When the Ottomans opened their borders throughout Europe and Asia and Africa, they brought this civilization, the civilization of Islam, the civilization of the Holy Prophet والسلام, the civilization of the Awliyaullah, the civilization of Tasawuf. The Ottomans were responsible for protecting the way of the Prophet ﷺ. And there were those who hated this civilization. There were those who could not stand the justice and fairness and equality of the Ottomans. And for 800 years, there were always enemies who were trying to bring down the Ottomans and to let the world go back to jahiliya and cruelty. There were just those who could not accept the Ottomans, just as shaitan was against Adam ﷺ. Just as Nimrud was against Ibrahim salam, just as Firaun was against Musa salam, just as Abu Jahl was against Rasulullah salam, there were enemies of the Ottomans who were constantly trying to bring them down. And in reality, they were trying to bring down Islam. In the last days of the Ottoman Empire, they were fighting on so many different war fronts because those descendants of Shaitan, the grandfathers of the murderers, 
in New Zealand, they wanted to bring Islam down, they wanted to bring that just civilization down, they wanted to bring the Ottomans down. And Monday, we're going to remember those brave defenders of truth, the defenders of Islam, the defenders of justice and equality, the defenders of the Ottomans, the martyrs of Chanakala, the martyrs of Gallipoli, who gave their lives so that cruelty and evil would not return to the earth. When the nations of the world came to try to finish the Ottomans in Chanakala, those brave soldiers stood up and they defended the legacy of Islam. As Shah Effendi is saying, the enemies came with over 525,000 soldiers trying to pass through Chanakali, Gallipoli. That's where the soldiers of Islam surprised them all. The last area for which they made all their calculations and said, this is finished now. We came to the end. We will pass from here and Istanbul will be gone. The people who are believing in Allah and his Prophet والسلام, and who have submitted themselves, their wills and their lives to Allah and his religion stood up and all their planning sank into those waters and those soldiers drowned in their own blood. Teaching a lesson to the whole world since that time up till now never to think that Islam will be taken down so easily. It is impossible. It looks it looks like it's down now because heedless Muslims are around, but it's not. Still, there are others sitting and waiting like those soldiers who have already sacrificed their lives for Allah and for His Prophet. They didn't reach to their aim then and they're never going to reach to their aim. Impossible. As long as there is one believer living on earth, it is impossible. They are not going to. This is to give us the understanding of what is Islam and when the time comes for us to be able to sacrifice our lives. This is not a matter of running, attacking or trying to take something or steal something from someone, no. But it is a matter of standing up and holding tightly to the rope of Allah as the Sahabis did. When a Sahabi was in the front line and an arrow came to his eye, entered it and made him blind. He took the arrow out. In that war, some betrayal happened and they turned their backs and they came to greet him and he said, what are you saying? Instead of having two eyes and to look back, meaning to run away, it is better to have one eye, to look forward always and to run to give this life for the sake of Allah. This is what these soldiers did in Chanakala. No one can say or treat them or give them the deserving title of where they belong. As the poet is saying, I cannot give you and I cannot do anything for you. But the Holy Prophet والسلام, is waiting in front of you. He has opened his jubba to every one of you. When we are sitting, thinking, concentrating, and trying to understand what had happened and how those people gave their lives. If we are not finding in our hearts to be able to say, if I was in that situation, I would also be able to sacrifice my life. Check your faith again. With that faith, you cannot reach anywhere. You need, you need a different kind of faith to pass the sirat, the bridge, if you understand what it is to sacrifice your life for Allah, His Prophet and for His religion. If we are not finding that in our hearts, then we must check ourselves and we must work on ourselves to be able to understand what is it to sacrifice for Islam. When it comes to talk, it's easy talking. We must think and concentrate and understand. That will make our faith to grow then. Our salam and our respect and our prayers are with those shuhada of Chanakil. Our salams and respect and prayers are for every shuhada, every shahid that had given their lives for the sake of Islam since the time of the Holy Prophet. 
They had given their lives so that we have Islam today. We must sit and we must remember. Allah does not forget. We are not fighting. And we do not want to fight. We removed ourselves from everything to come, to live here on the top of this mountain. The fighting that we are doing now, it is against to battle that is inside of us. It is against our nafs and our shaitan that is inside of us. It is impossible to stop the shaitan that is outside. And for that reason, we are sitting and preparing ourselves for the sahibu zaman, the owner of the time to come and to bring this injustice down. We removed ourselves from everything to come live here on the top of this mountain to find a place to worship our Lord in peace. This is hijrah. This is what the Prophet did. And for everyone's information, this is what, for America's information, this is what your forefathers did. To come to a wild area just to be able to worship. They made hijrah. This is what we're doing. This is America. This is our land. Islam is here to stay. And we are here to spread the message of Islam. And we are Americans, but we are Muslims. And we want this love and this peace to be able to worship our Lord and to be able to know each other as our Prophet had taught us for 1400 years for the people here in this continent to taste. We are here to live our faith. And we are here to defend Islam. We are here to defend the civilization and the justice and the equality of Islam. We are here to defend and stand up for our Ottoman grandfathers and to live the way that they lived. We are here to say without fear and with the faith of our Shaykh and our grandfathers, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. We are here to be on the side of Haq and to wait for the takbir of Sahibul Zaman where he will come to unite all the believers regardless of what you call yourself, regardless of what religion you belong to, what nationality you claim. That is a time when the believers are going to be united, just as the unbelievers now, they are united. We are here to be servants of Allah. May Allah forgive us. May Allah protect us. May Allah give us more strength and more faith. May Allah keep us always under the feet and under the protection of these friends. Amen. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. Subhan kudusun rabbun rabbul malaikati wa rah Subhan kudusun rabbun rabbul malaikati Inna dina ka Allah ya salam Qamu salam Allahumma salam Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Allahu akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Hayyan al-sala Hayyan al-sala Hayyan al-fala Hayyan al-fala Wadigamu salat Wadigamu salam Allahu akbar Allahu akbar la ilaha illallah Sayyidina Allah